Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how I'm going to modify the drivetrain on my bicycle so that it can be powered by a motor. Okay, so the first step in modifying this drivetrain is to remove the dry side crank arm. Uh, the dry side is the side with all the sprockets on it. So basically in my particular bicycle there's a 14 millimeter uh, nut that's holding the crank arm onto the spindle. So I'm just using the ratchet and turning counterclockwise to undo it. I've done this many times before, that's why it's so easy for it to come off. When you do this, there's going to be a lot of rust that are going to bind the components together. So once that nut is off, then it's probably still going to be a little bit stuck onto the spindle. So I just use a, using a hammer, just tap the end. Alright, so once the crank arm is detached, the next thing I'm going to do is basically um, cut out the set of sprockets from the crank arm and then weld this free wheel onto the, uh, the sprocket set and basically what that would do is it will allow the sprockets to spin past uh, the pedals and the pedals can remain stationary otherwise if I just use it just like this and the motor was powering the sprocket set that means the pedal would just spin at a super high RPM which is really dangerous so this free wheel allows the uh, two different speeds uh, the, the pedals to remain stationary while your feet rest on them and the sprockets get spin past. should be pretty much free. Like so. And this is basically what I'm going to weld the free wheel onto. Alright, so the next part of this is to grind down the surface here, nice and flat, so I could weld on uh, this piece. This is basically um, the end cap for the left side of the bottom bracket on the bicycle. And this has the correct thread to allow me to screw on the freewheel. And so basically, this will thread onto the inside part. Like so. And I touched upon this in the previous video, but basically what happens is that um, since this is a one-way clutch, this will allow the motor power um, to basically still transmit power to the rear wheel, but since the inside part uh, portion is separated, that allows the pedal to remain stationary because this part here will be welded uh, onto the crank like so. However, um, when I run out of battery power um, and I apply force to the pedal, uh, that will basically lock up the clutch and allow the entire thing to spin as a single unit. And that will allow me to pedal normally. Okay, so the next step is to weld uh, the end cap onto the crank arm, which I've ground down to make it nice and flat. So first I'm going to weld uh, the 
end cap with its um, ring nut uh, together and then weld this onto here. And that's just to help to keep it aligned. Okay, so now I have the part just welded, aligned with the crank arm and the vise, and so I'm going to weld the two together. Okay, so now that I've finished welding up this piece, the next thing I need to do is modify the chainring assembly. And I basically need to expand this inner uh, circumference here so that it can fit around the freewheel. Uh, and basically, this will just sit on top of the freewheel like that. And I'll weld the two together. But I've decided instead of using uh, this freewheel, I'm going to use a larger one with 21 teeth instead of 16 teeth. And basically, um, the extra teeth enlarge the diameter or the circumference of it. Um, so that gives me more room to weld. Uh, versus with this one, um, there's barely any room to weld. And there's a chance that the weld might uh, seize or um, attach the inner portion or the outer portion together. And that would seize the free wheel. So this just gives me more room to play with. Okay, so I've grinded on the inside and now this can fit perfectly flush. The next thing I'm going to do is basically um, cut out a couple of these teeth here to give me room to weld the freewheel onto the sprocket. Okay, now I'm going to start welding the two together. Make sure when you do this is um, 
that um, the side of the freewheel that spins clockwise, that goes face down on top of the sprocket. Um, so we go like this. So the entire sprocket could spin clockwise like that. And the inside will remain stationary. If you put it in the wrong way, then it just won't function correctly. Alright, so this is what the part looks like now. As you can see, I put four welds around the corners. Not the corners, but um, in these different areas here. Um, I don't really know why I trimmed down the teeth here, because originally I was planning to weld um, in these gaps. Um, but I found that the spacing between the freewheel and the sprocket was too great, so I just decided to weld on top of the remaining teeth. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to let this cool down. And then I could start working on the uh, attaching it to the crank arm. Alright, so unfortunately, when I was welding, uh, the sprocket detached from the part, uh, the freewheel section. I think it's because I cut way too much off of uh, these edges that are sticking out here. So I'm just going to have to repeat the same alignment procedure that I used for the freewheel, align it back on, and then just tack it back in. But now that I have access to this part um, specifically, uh, this allows me to grind down the welds I just made and attach the 18 tooth sprocket to the back here, that's going to drive the train, the chain to the rear wheel. So this is a previous freewheeling uh, cassette that I made, um, and basically this is how the finished product is supposed to look like. Uh, this one has a lot of problems, like it wobbles a lot. Um, and basically, what I'm trying to copy from this older design is having this uh, 18 to sprocket on the back uh, end of the freewheel, and the rest of the sprocket on the front end. So just this one at the back here, I'm just going to uh, cut it out and then attach it to uh, the back of the new one I just made. So this is what the part looks like. It's basically um, one of the sprockets taken from the rear cassette. Um, and they basically just all come apart and I just took the 18 tooth one. And I've uh, basically ground down the inside diameter so that it fits over the freewheel. And I just weld it um, onto the outer part that spins. This is going to be tricky because there's a very little, a very small lip. So my welds can't overlap between the lip and the inside part. So in order to properly space this 18 tooth away from uh, the rest of the sprockets, I'm basically using this plastic uh, ring. And I'll just put it down here. And make sure it's like pressed in. And then I'll put the 18 tooth on top of that. And that perfectly spaces the 18 tooth away.
Alright, so this is what the finished product looks like. The 18 tooth is welded onto the edge of the freewheel, and on the other side is the first sprocket of the entire uh, cassette. Now because it's detached from the rest, I have to align this part back onto the rest of the sprocket and weld it back together. So basically, um, looking at the bike from the drive side, this largest sprocket is basically where the motor chain is going to drive uh, the cassette. And then the sprocket I just welded on, this 18 tooth at the back here, is what's going to drive the chain to the rear wheel. And because there's such a large size difference between uh, the, the sprocket, this 18 tooth sprocket and this 36 tooth sprocket, that's going to result in a lot of torque multiplication. And that should get the motor, that should allow the motor to be able to power the bike. Alright, so I have to flip the entire thing upside down to get access to the top here, where that's where I have to weld. Um, I did check the real the alignment with the caliper, and I got everything to within a, uh, a couple thousandths. Um, so hopefully when I weld, the alignment will still stay true. So that's what I'm going to do now. Alright, so this is what the completed uh, freewheel cassette assembly looks like. Um, so the motor chain is going to be meshed to this uh, outermost sprocket. And the sprocket here is going to drive the chain to the rear wheel. And so mounted on the bike, if the motor is powering the bike, this thing will spin, but the middle remains stationary. And because the pedals will be threaded into the middle, they'll also remain stationary. But when you run out of battery power and you want to pedal normally, um, the whole thing locks up and it could spin as a single unit. So I did one minor change which is that I bolted on a 42 sprocket onto the cassette and this is going to allow the motor to exert more torque on the drive train. Alright, so now I'm going to screw the two together. Okay, so I screwed the pedal into the cassette, and this is basically how it's supposed to work. The motor powers the sprockets, but the pedals remain stationary. But when you want to use the pedals, the whole thing locks up and spins just like it would on a normal bike. Alrighty, so that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to actually be attaching this to the bicycle and testing it under motor power. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for part 3.